All right, so let's look at some ideas that lie, lay behind the proof of the four color theorem. So the four color theorem is the statement that any simple planar graph is four vertex colorable. And by the previous lectures, we have reduced this to the statement that every cubic map is four face colorable. So let's look at the main ideas of the proof. How do you prove that such a map is four face colorable? Uh, I will just give the ideas and some of this will be quite abstract and I will not be precise. The idea is just to highlight this theorem because it's one of the major achievements in graph theory. You are not required to be able to reproduce this proof or to know the steps precisely. So the first notion is the notion of unavoidability. This you can take as an exercise uh, if, you're interesting, if you're interested to show that any cubic map must contain either a triangle or a rectangle or a pentagon somewhere in the graph. Another word, another way to say this is that the set of triangles, rectangles and pentagons is an unavoidable set of configurations, meaning that it is impossible to draw a cubic map without somewhere having one configuration from this set. So you can draw a configure here, triangle, rectangle and pentagon are each called configurations. So in pictures, a triangle is this. So you will, if you look closely at a map, you will find it somewhere. A rectangle is this. And a pentagon is this. So if you look at the world map, the actual world map, you will see that there is either one country that is uh, that has three neighbors or one country that has four neighbors or one country that has five neighbors. It's unimaginable that a world exists where no country has any of these numbers of neighbors. So that is one unavoidable set of configurations. Another unavoidable set of configurations is the one with a triangle, rectangle, and not just a pentagon, but it turns out that your pentagon has to be adjacent to either another pentagon or a hexagon. So pentagon adjacent to a hexagon. So that's another unavoidable set of configurations. The way to prove this from the previous one, I'll just give you an idea, is that assume that each uh, face uh, is assigned a so-called charge, which is six minus the uh, number of edges. So uh, the pentagon has charge one, the seven gone, the heptagon has charge minus one and so on. Then you can show that the total charge is 12 always. This is akin to the statement that a football will always have 12 pentagonal faces. And uh, you can prove that if uh, every pentagon is adjacent to a face with more than seven, uh, with seven or more sides, then by moving charges around you get a contradiction. But that's very sweeping, that's not so important. So some uh, some configurations are unavoidable. That is the first part of the proof. The other idea is that of reducibility. So a configuration of faces in a map is called reducible if a four coloring of all faces except one can be extended to a four coloring of all faces. So for example, this configuration So I'm just going to zoom in on it here. This configuration is uh, reducible because if I can color all these faces, say I color them blue, green, and red, then I can color the whole thing because I have four colors. So whichever the fourth color is that I am missing, 
I can use for this triangle. Less obvious is this configuration. So now maybe I have here red, here green, here blue, and here yellow. So you might wonder, how can I color this uh, face? Well, after a bit of tweaking, you can. This tweaking consists on uh, first proving that either you have patches of blue, yellow going in cycle, like this. So you have yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow. Or you have the same thing for red and green. And this means that in this compartment, you have a bunch of faces where you can just swap the roles of red and green, and this will not affect this green one. So I can replace this color by green, and then I can color my missing face red. So this was a, a cool trick, but that's just to give you an idea that it's not just the obvious faces that are reducible. So how did people prove this four color theorem? They proved it by showing that there exists an unavoidable set of reducible configurations. So there is a set like this uh, triangle, uh, rectangle, pentagon that I showed you on the last slide. There is such a set consisting of a bunch of configurations that are all reducible, meaning that if in each configuration you color all faces but one, you can color all faces. If such a uh, set exists, then if there is a counterexample to the theorem, if there is a map that is not four colorable, then it will have one of these reducible configurations somewhere in it. So this means that if you remove one face, the remaining map will still be not four colorable because reducible face means that if upon removal of a face, I can four color the map, then I can four color the original thing. So if the original thing is not four colored, then removing a face uh, will result in something that is not four colorable. Okay, so now if I started with a million faces on my map, now I know, and if that is a counterexample, then I will have a counterexample with a million minus one faces. But then that is a map, and that still has this unavoidable set of reducible configurations because every map has this unavoidable set of reducible configurations because unavoidable. So then I can play the same game and reduce the number of faces by one. So in other words, I can repeat the face so that whichever counterexample you give me, I can give you a smaller counterexample. And this is a contradiction because then there is no minimal counterexample. I end up with zero faces and, and that's not gonna happen. So there gets a contradiction. And this is difficult because how do you find this uh, unavoidable set of reducible configurations? This is where computer work is required to uh, check that this exists. And it was probably a huge set of configurations, not just three like rectangle, uh, triangle, pentagon, but much more. So hopefully this gives you a sweeping idea of the proof of the four color theorem, which by no means I pretend to uh, be knowledgeable in, but if you are interested, there is a whole lot of information on Wikipedia and online in general about the four color theorem. And again, uh, this video is mostly for your enjoyment. You do not have to uh, know this, but it would be a shame if I would let a coursing graph theory pass without mention of the proof of the four color theorem. So here we go.